So Lady of Irith just got a massive buff, or what seems to be a massive buff, where she increases the cooldown by one turn, added to her A3. Where is this going to be most useful? So is Lady of Irith good now? Because when she was first released, I summoned her. I was pretty hyped because she was the character from the show, but I haven't used her. I don't even think I booked her. What do you guys think? Should I max her out? Should I try her out in some content? Let's see where she, what the people are saying she might be useful uh, in. Hydra. I feel like she's going to enter Hydra Trenda teams because of the three turn cooldown. Only one in the game at the moment. And she can give that 50% turn meter boost to Trunda. And make Trunk Heart. I literally pulled Trunda 10 days ago, my last legendary I pulled. Sorry, my verge is a bit wonky here. She deceases decreases cooldown of all team skills by one turn except her own got her recently with a six star stole uh, soul turn off her a2 in hydra put her on a reflex set she ensures my shike's taunt stays up for the rest of the 1500 turn limit maybe eternal dragon where she can decrease i thought eternal dragon decreases cooldown you need to decrease the cooldown uh, if you don't have trenda are there any other champions that would benefit from lady Max HP damage champions like Nut, they can get their nukes faster. Who isn't going to benefit from having their cooldowns reduced often? Some benefit more than others, of course, but of course, it's going to be great for everybody. Hydra champ for sure. Yumiko, Nia, Irith. Uh, fill the last slots with whatever roles left needing to be filled. All right, that's very fast and high end gear. Here's my Lady of Irith. Um, she kind of looks, now that I look at her, she kind of looks a little dome i don't know what's going on with her face here but like yeah she, she's a pretty you know cool character and whatnot i don't use her for anything i do have a four star blessing for her i didn't know what to put on her so i put intimidating presence but uh, if you have any suggestions let me know what's a better blessing i don't have any masteries on her because i've never found anywhere that i need her in uh, but i originally had her in immortal and relentless so now that she's gotten her buff and let's look at the ratings for her real quick yeah, as you can see, pretty below par mid. A lot of threes going around. So let's look at her current skills. A1 instantly activates one random continuous heal on all allies with less than 85% HP. A2, debuff removal from one ally, heal by 50% of this champion's HP. She can crit that heal just like Apothecary. So, you know, building Apothecary with 100% means that you can crit that heal. And this is the same thing with Lady of Irith now. I don't know if this is in direct correlation to crit damage. So, like, let's say if I crit heal, do I heal more if I have higher crit damage? It doesn't seem like that's the thing, but I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But if the target ally is not healed, it gets a block damage. That's pretty cool. Two turns of it. And if you do heal it, fills the turn meter by 50%. And then heals all allies equal to 50% uh, of that surplus heal. So everybody's getting healed if, you know, this surplus heal happens, right? That's pretty cool. But I think this is the calling card now for a Lady Irith. On a three-turn cooldown, places Strengthen and Continuous Heal on all allies for two turns. We know how good Strengthen is. And Continuous Heal's pretty nice. Three-turn cooldown decreases the cooldown of all allies' skills, except this champion by one turn. Her shield that she places is equal to 50% of her max HP. Put on the ally with the lowest HP for two turns at the start of her champ uh, at the start of her turn. That's on a one turn cooldown. This is my current nightmare team. I do 200 million plus on nightmare with this team. Uh, keep in mind the differences. Grand Oak Podrick is pretty uh, oiled all the way up, enchanted with a five star blessing, while Lady of Irith isn't that. And you know he's booked up and everything, but she's not. So keep that in mind. Um, I think the guy said to turn off the A2. Uh, so, I mean, let's just leave it on and we'll see. Because I think healing will help out in this team since he was doing some heals in um, this fight. So I'm going to throw it on and we'll see how this pans out if we end up doing a lot more damage. And again, it's a full auto team, so I'm going to let this be on full auto i'm not going to click anything and we're just going to kind of watch and then i'll skip to the end whenever the the run ends all right so that was the heal that we saw turn meter boosts 
I didn't see what the big heal was. But we'll uh, slow it down next time around. And let's see. She's about to do her A3. So she is going quite slow. A lot of these guys are going a lot faster. She is only going, what, 240, I think it was? I forgot, what the, I, I forgot to show the stats. Okay, so she places the these buffs here. I'll show you the stats in a, in a minute towards the end here. Just so you can see. Not looking good. I think she procked that Relympus that time. Okay, that was the heal. Picked one person and healed everybody else. Look at Necmo getting all those turn meter boosts every time Shamael hits. Okay, hit the A1. And you see everybody got their decreased cooldown, so everybody has their skills um, back now. Pretty cool. She has some viability. I'm pretty sure that if you tweaked this team a little bit more, she could do a lot more. I'm pretty sure if I put books on her, you know, I made her better. But um, yeah, that's just kind of a little bit of a showcase on her. Not a full showcase, but just to give you maybe some inkling of a better idea. Um, would I use her instead of Grand Oak Podrick? Probably not. I think she's good now, but it's also relative to where she's come from. Whoa, I'm a big bag hunter with the bow. She got a big bad number drop.